Okay, let's try and find one. So uh, I'm looking for one that just has a bunch of columns and rows. That's it, you know. So we're looking for thousands of templates online. I uh, just hold on. Where did I go? File, new. This is the new button. What if I, oh, home. Um, let me try financial management. Bathroom remodel cost calculator. Let me see that one. Okay, this is the one I like. Let's go with this one. Where's that? Is that on? That, I'll, I'll find it for you. Again, um, it's underneath uh, new. Um, financial management. I haven't got a new. You don't have a Just new? Just put it in the back. On the top. Here. Yeah. Financial management. Bathroom. And then I went down to uh, bathroom. Like bathroom. The one that says bathroom remodel and cost. I guess you can type in bathroom here, huh? D A T H R O O M. Does that come up then? Mm. Yeah, it does right there. Bathroom. I just come on. I put bathroom. Bathroom. Okay, so uh, our videos today will talk again about how to do certain things with basic Excel. Uh, some of the things that we'll do is uh, hiding. So let's say you wanted to print this out and send it to somebody. Oh, cool. Maybe they don't need to know all the information. So how do I hide a column, right? How to hide a column. Uh, let's say you, the people are scrolling. They're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And we want this, this, this up here, this itemized area, quantity, estimate, this whole row here to stay the same. So as I'm scrolling, it doesn't go above the fold. If that makes any sense, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't go above? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna learn some basic Excel things like that to hide columns and do that. And we do that through um, some nice videos that are already here for us, uh, somewhere here, here they are. And it's this one right here, it's called Design Workbooks. And we're gonna start with the first video right here, hide to hide and show a column. And we'll watch it and then try so it. So we're about to print this data. The quick keystroke oh, shortcut for print on. preview is click on the data, press Control F2. Now, not only is this not going to fit across a page, I realize there's data in here that we really don't need to have printed. We don't need to see the social security number and for this particular purpose. Okay, again, he, what he's demonstrating is that if you go to the print option, you'll notice that most of the stuff that we have right here is not going to fit on one page. So one reason why you might want to hide things is you can hide them just so that when you print them, it only prints the things you want, right? Okay, so you might not see the difference and so on. So that's sort of what he's talking about in that video. Oh, I keep going here. Let's log me out. And here we go. So we don't need to see the building, so let's escape from here. Let's hide a column. I'm going to hide column B. Now I can hide a single column simply by right-clicking the column letter. You don't even have to select it first. I could just put the mouse here, right-click, hide the column. Starting in Excel 2013, that, that indicator between two columns when we've got a hidden column is a double line now. It's much easier to see. And you might say, well, surely you know that's missing. There's no B there. It's amazing how often you forget that and you look at worksheets and you just don't think about the fact that there might be, or the possibility that there might be a hidden column. So that's hidden. We can hide multiple columns. I want to hide, for example, columns D and E. And while I'm at it, I want to hide column J. So using the control key, I'll click column key. J, right click and hide. They're not hidden. A quick look at our print preview now, control F2. Okay, so let's hide some columns. There we go. We'll go over here to our project. Again, let's just hide, uh, how about quantity? So if I go over here to the this column, I can right click on it. Oops, we gotta go to the top, go up to the to the D right here. See where it says D? Go up here to D. If I right click on that, I can say hide to hide one column. And notice, again, he, what he talked about is you can see there's like a little double kind of line up here that indicates that this one is now hidden. There's something hiding in between there. Okay, oh, I can bring it back by putting my cursor up there and dragging out. Oh, did you see that? Again, right click on it, 
say hide, you get a little double line up there, you put your cursor up there between them, you can click and hold the mouse down and drag out and it comes back out. Okay, so again, hiding. But it, So let's hide this one again, we'll hide it. And then let's hide two more, how about we do the differences? We want both differences to be gone, which would be, in this case, G and J right here, G and J. So if I hit G and I hold down the control key and then go over and hit J, it'll select both columns. So again, holding the control key down as I'm doing that, then again, I right click and say hide column right there and it hides them. If you wanna unhide them, it looked like there was a way to unhide, is right click and say unhide and it brings them back. Hide and then I right clicked in between and said unhide to bring them back hide. Okay, so now if we want to go, let's go to the print option and see. We want to go print. Again, to go to print is control F, I believe, on the keyboard. No, not find. What am I want? No, control P, do it for print. There we go. And you'll see that it all kind of fits on one page now. And the other ones probably didn't fit because it was probably there. I'm not really sure if it would have fit anyways. But as you can see, it's a much cleaner. When you hide, it's not going to print those ones that are hidden out. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. You guys cool with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. We're not seeing the building entry there, the social security, the phone number, the other hidden columns regarding salary and so on. Maybe this will help us in our printing purpose. But we've got different reasons for not wanting to see the data. It could be that we rarely need to look at that social security number, so let's keep that hidden. We can easily get these back. If we'd like to get back just a single column, for example, column J, drag across the surrounding columns, two quick methods. We can right click and unhide. That's probably the more likely choice, logically. But as I press Control Z to undo, another way, perhaps a little faster, drag across, double click the boundary here, or the right edge, either way, double click. There it is, it's back. And there could be situations, let me undo that again, where we want to unhide all columns. In fact, maybe we've got data way off to the right. Are all of our columns visible? Well, let's make sure, click in the upper left corner, double click any column boundary. It could be there, it could be there, it could be there, even though there's nothing hidden right here, we can double click. All hidden columns are back. The other method, let me again press Control Z. We've selected all the columns. We right click any column and unhide. Okay, so he's talking about selecting a whole bunch of things all at the same time. Again, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet here. Um, again, an easy way to select everything in Excel is all the way in the upper left corner. You'll see there's like a little page thingy here. There's like a little arrow that's way up there you get a little plus right there if you click on that it selects everything again it's all the way up next to where the a and the one are right above where a and one are if you click right there it selects all then if you want to unhide all again you can just right click up there and say unhide and it'll unhide all of them okay and then I can undo that again control Z another way to click select all is of course using the keyboard command which is control a on the keyboard control a on the keyboard is a way that you can select all or click up here in the upper corner. Can we hide a row the same way? Ooh. Ooh. Right click on a row and say hide. Uh oh. I hid everything. Did it? Okay. Hey, let's try. It. Let's see if we can do it. Right click. Hide. There we go. You can do, we do a row too. I hid number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Okay, to bring it back, you can either drag, like I said, drag drag down, it ooh, brings it back, or you can right click and say hide, and right click and say unhide. So again, you can do rows as well as columns. You can do multiple rows, holding down the control key as well. Select more than one row, right click and say hide, and it'll go away. And then edit undo if you want to bring it, oh, where's my undo? And there's undo right there. Okay, you ready to move on? Okay, second video. Let's see if there's anything else left. Learning doesn't stop. Whoosh. Freeze a panel. Okay, this one is again um, how to, to kind of um, 
set of a, a, a column or a row that doesn't move. It stays in the same spot. Or freeze is the term they use to describe it. Freeze. In an Excel 2016 worksheet, you have over a million rows to work with and over 16,000 columns to work with. Now, if you start to add so much data that you can't see it all in one screen, there are some cool features to help you with getting things lined up. We can freeze rows and columns, also known as panes. And let's go down to our zoom slider down below and click the plus sign. I'm going to zoom in to over 140%. I'm going to go up to 150 and you'll notice now we have a scroll bar here that allows us to scroll left to right. And when we go over to the right to see the last few columns, we can no longer see the first column with our location. So when we look at these values, we can't really line them up with anything unless we've memorized that, okay, there they are, London, Paris, San Francisco, Hong Kong. Wouldn't it be better if we could always see this content? That means freezing column A. And when we scroll down, eventually we lose those labels for the months and we have no idea what months we're looking at here. So let's talk about freezing panes. The first thing we'll do is go up to the View tab on the ribbon, give it a click. You will see a Freeze Panes drop-down button. Give it a click and there are three options. Freeze panes, we'll come back to that in a second. Freezing the top row means we'll always be able to see the top row as we scroll down. All that means is we'll always be able to see our title. That's not going to be very helpful. Freezing the first column, though, might be helpful. Let's give that a click. Notice the faint line that appears between columns A and B, and now when we use our scroll bar to scroll to the right, we always see the contents of column A. So when we go all the way over to the totals, we can see the totals and line them up with the actual locations. But as we scroll down, we still lose those labels for the different months, and we don't really know what data we're looking at. So let's scroll all the way back to the left, and instead of just freezing column A, we want to freeze column A and all of the rows above row 6 so that we can see January, February, March, etc. So in that case, we'll go up to the drop down. Now we see unfreeze panes at the top, so we'll give that a click. You can see it unfreezes that first column. And now we can choose exactly what we want to freeze. We want everything to the left of column B, so we need to click somewhere in column B. We also want to see all of the rows from 1 to 5, so that means clicking below row 5, which means by clicking in cell B6, we'll be able to see everything to the left and everything above when we go back up to freeze panes, and this time choose freeze panes. This allows us to freeze both rows and columns at the same time. Now look what happens when we scroll down. We'll always be able to see those labels for January, February, March, etc. And when we scroll over to the right, we froze in that first column. So we'll always know what data we're looking at thanks to freezing panes here in Excel. Learning doesn't stop here. Oh my god, that was fabulous. Okay. So what do you click on to get freeze? What's that? What do you click on to get freeze on the top? Oh, it's under view. Okay, again, he's talking under view here. So we're going to go under view. Under view, you'll notice there's an option for freeze panes right here. Freeze panes. So uh, in this case, we want probably everything that's going to be from 5 above and probably over from B. Well, first let's just do the, you know, uh, let's not even worry about it. Let's just do the, the one that makes sense. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on 6C. That's where I'm going to go, 6C in the one I'm looking at. And then what I'm going to do is go to the freeze panel and say freeze panels. What it's going to do is it's going to show it's going to freeze all the ones above where I clicked and all the ones to the left of where I clicked. If you look at the little icon, look at the little icon right here. You can see the little like hash marks that they have there. Do you see that? So it's going to freeze everything that's above where I clicked and to the left where I clicked. And so if I click on that, you get these little crosshairs over here. Now if I scroll, you'll see that the top stays the same. And if I scroll to the left, the left stays the same. Now it's not it's not perfect because you know you start losing stuff when you're going down here and then across, but at least it's a way to try and freeze some of the data, especially when you have really big, big, big Excel. I mean, literally, the school sends me an Excel file for planning 
two-year plan. I have to do a two-year plan of how many classes I'm going to offer for the next two years. And they send me a giant freaking Excel file, and I have to go in there and put in this data, how many students in the class, what time of day is it, you know, is it evening, day, or online? And it's, it's a giant Excel file, and it's huge. And, you know, they don't have freezing pain, so I have to keep going up and looking down and looking around and trying to change things. If they just do simple things like that, it would save my life a lot better. Maybe I need to teach them how to do some Excel. Okay, let's move on. Oh, where was I at? Oh, there we go. Move and copy a worksheet. This is how to take data from one area and put it into another area. Okay. Data from one area and put it into another area. Moving a sheet simply means dragging the sheet tab and putting it before or after other sheets, leftward or rightward, wherever we want to put it. I'm dragging the south sheet leftward, putting it in front of Midwest, and there it is. Very easy to move a sheet. No commands needed. I might want to make a copy of one of these sheets. Maybe what I'd like to do is to create a sheet. Uh-oh. What happened? Moving a sheet simply means dragging the sheet tab and putting it before. And choose move or sheets. Almost the same way. But I'm going to create some summary form in front of Midwest. And there it is. Very All right. Something happened in this video. Let's play it again. Moving a sheet simply means dragging the sheet tab and putting it before or after other sheets, leftward or rightward, wherever we want to put it. I'm dragging the south sheet leftward, putting it in front of Midwest, and there it is. Very easy to move a sheet. No commands needed. I might want to make a copy of one of these sheets. Maybe what I'd like to do is to create a sheet that has the same layout as all these, but I'm going to create some summary formulas there. How might I create a copy of one of these sheets? Almost the same way. Now, if you didn't know what I'm about to show you, you'd probably, and certainly sensibly, right-click the Sheet tab it's and choose copy. Move or Copy. Simple. I doubt very many people use this for moving, but Copy, not a bad idea. It's got an added advantage, too. When you copy a sheet, and you do have to check the box below here, not only might you copy it to a different location in this sheet, you could copy it to a new book or if you have other workbooks open, you could copy it there. And you'll even have the option of copying it between. So basically what he's talking about is that you can copy the data from one Excel file to another file. When he uses the word book, is referring to a workbook. And the sheets are all in a workbook. So you can take, you don't have to you know, try and merge them together. You can go to a sheet and copy it into another Excel file. So when he says the word book, it's just another Excel file could be, you know, a different file. Between whichever sheet you want in that other workbook, because they will be listed. Now, I simply want to create a copy of this sheet in a new workbook. Click OK. Remember, we're currently viewing 0903 Regional Sales. We're about to see a new workbook. Top of the screen says Book 2. It's got a single sheet in it called Pacific. So we had right-clicked on the Sheet tab in the other file, chose Copy, and then New Workbook, and here we are. I'll press Control-Tab to go back to the other workbook, and here we are. If you'd like to make a copy of a sheet in the current workbook, we can simply drag a sheet tab left or right with the Control key held down. And there's a tiny plus there. I'll just drag it to the right and let go of the mouse. Remember, the rationale for doing this might be, I'm about to create a summary sheet here. These two sheets are identical in all respects except for the name. So next order of business might be simply rename this. I'll double click and type summary, write some formulas here, or just take out this data, and all the other formulas would work eventually correctly. I'd rename that as well. I'm not doing that here, but it's easy to make a copy of a sheet in the same workbook. Simply drag the sheet tab with the control key held down. Be sure to let go of the mouse first. We can copy a sheet. Learning doesn't stop here. Fabulous. Okay, so let's let's mess with our, our files that we have here. So again, we have a whole bunch of different files. Some are hidden, some are locked, some are, um, you know, we've gone through that. Uh, notice we only have one sheet down here. So if I look down towards the bottom here where it says bathroomy model, 
it, it's all by itself. If I want to duplicate this, again, I can hold down the control key and I can click on that and just drag to the right a little bit and it'll make a, a, a copy of it. Again, holding the control key down, click on the sheet name down here and just drag to the right a little bit. It'll make a new copy or a copy of the, the sheet. In addition, you'll notice there is a plus down there. They'll give you a new blank sheet if you want a new blank sheet. Let's say we want to take some of the data out of this sheet and put it onto its own sheet. Okay, so the, you want to see just the, how about say the total cost, okay, and in its own sheet. So right now I know we duplicated it and so on, but let's say you want to take some data and, and move it into its own sheet. So it's all, so uh, we want to do the total cost up here. So um, I'm going to click on both rows here by holding down the control key and selecting both rows themselves. So I went over there to total cost and I selected both rows. And I don't know what's going to do about the G. There's actually a G in between there. I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll, we're going to try it. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say um, copy. I thought that would, hold on, let me, let me do this again. Format cells, copy, special. Uh, format cells, uh, 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 copy. We cannot do that to emerge to a merge cell. We cannot do that. Um, hold on, let me see what I want to do here. I think the problem is is there's a messed up shell in between. That's what I want to do, and I want to then go to. Um, Copy. I'm gonna make a new cell. I think there's a problem with the um, and then paste. Yeah, but then the values are all messed up because the formulas are there. Okay, that's not gonna do what I want. Let's move on. How about that? I have to think about that. Um, let's talk about uh, deleting things, which is is a very difficult thing to do in this in this program. Um, again, if you're selecting something and you're deleting it, um, if you hit the delete key, it tends to mess things up somewhat. Um, uh, as you can tell, when I deleted that, it deleted everything in between. Uh, just be wary of the delete key. The other thing I wanted to notice about this is that you see some pull down menus here. Okay, do you see them right here? There's these little pull down menus that are up here. We're going to learn how to make these things as well. See the pull down menu right there? The advantage of using this pull down menu is that I can sort the information that is inside of here by sort smallest to largest, sort largest to smallest. So again, that's what these little arrows are. We'll learn how to make these little arrows inside of the program. Again, the beauty of doing this is that it allows you to reorder things. So if we want to say smallest to largest, if I click on that, you notice everything reordered and it put the lowest number one there to the highest number down here. So why don't you try that? Again, I'm using the total estimated cost. Again, it's a pull down option here. And you can sort by largest to smallest and so on. Sort by smallest to largest. Anybody got that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, uh, do the last video in this series. The last video in this series is how to um, color or apply a theme to your workbook. How to apply a theme. Um, and basically themes change the color. Now, we also, we also have, have something, something called themes. themes. I'm going to go to a different worksheet here called Themes. This worksheet has an object in it, this hexagon on the lower right. It's got an object here with some text on it. It's got some other data that's been highlighted. And it's got a chart. We can see all these. If you're working on a project that might involve Microsoft Word and or Microsoft Project, if you're pulling together some material, possibly for publication or for presentation, it would make sense to be using the same color palettes in all of those. So, so the, the idea, idea of a theme is introduced by Microsoft in Excel 2007, PowerPoint 2007, and so on, can be applied the same way in all three software packages. 
You find, find this on the layout tab. tab. Now, well, I don't change themes myself very often, but when I do, I go to this button right here, themes. Pick a new theme to give your document instant style and just the right personality. Each theme uses a unique set of colors, fonts, and effects to create a consistent look and feel. So they're themes. The standard theme that most people use and some people never change is Office. There's one called Facet. As I'm sliding over these, what's happening to the right? Ion Slice. How many choices do we have here? How much time do you have? You can begin to see the different effects of what's happening here. This is workbook wide. We're not looking at the other sheet, but changes will occur there too if we finally lock in and decide on one of these. Suppose this one appeals to us, Celestial. We can change it if we don't like it. Learning. So again, the thing to keep in mind with the theme though is the what he just said is that it's workbook wide. So if you change it in one sheet, Remember, it's going to change it in the other sheets as well. A theme is, is, is applied to the workbook. So if we go back to our thing, right now we have this standard green and whatever ugly look that it is. If we want to change it, we can go underneath the, um, where was it, layout, page layout, and you'll notice you have themes up here in the upper corner. If we click on that, you'll notice we have our different options, and you can start seeing them. Some have bigger text than others, you know, so it de kind of depends on how you want to read it. Some has bold text, some has, you know, you know this one was quite nice, the feathered. Is that, is that the original? I think that is the one it was, right? Mm -hmm. Droplet, circuit, um, vapor, there you go. Get your vapor trail, oh, there you go, beautiful view, slate. Wood type, and you can browse for themes. You can download themes, I believe, from the. Let's see, browse for themes. I know there's themes out there. You can, I'm sure you can download them from the Microsoft website. And you'll notice each one has different fonts and stuff like that. So let's choose a theme. I'm going to choose the Metropolitan. And then let's say we want to alter that theme, alter it. I believe we can by using these options here. You have the color option here. You have the font option there. And you have effects option there. So if I go to color, I can go and adjust the color. Notice how it's still using the same theme that I originally chose, and it's just adjusting the colors because the fonts are staying the same. If you want to change the fonts, you can come over here and adjust the fonts. And notice it's a combination of fonts. You can also customize fonts if you would like. And you can install your own fonts if you want. You got your Broadway. And a brush font. Let's see how this one looks. And we give it a name. Jeff's fonts. I was in the customized fonts. And woo, look at that. Now that is readable, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so be careful what you wish for, right? Okay, so just be careful. Um, I've seen people with things that look like this, right? So, you know, design wise, you should think about, you know, the readability. Right? And things like that. I've seen people design things with brushy font like that. Try to avoid that. Simple is better. Um, don't know. Trebuchet is always a good one. It's one of my favorite. It has a very big, big X height though, this one. And the X height is the size of the lowercase letters. This font that I just cho chose here has a very, the, um, very big X height. If you choose another one, you'll notice they have a small smaller letters. Verdana, I always love this one. Verdana is one of my favorite fonts. Okay, but cool, you ready to move on? Okay. So again, themes, colors, fonts, effects. Um, we haven't really done any effects yet. We can, we can probably make something if you want. Um, <coughs> I guess for the effects is um, for objects that you make and kind of you can make objects inside of um, 
Excel. Those kind of objects can be made by under the um, object making option. Um, right here under insert, there's some objects right here, common shapes and common um, smart objects. These are two different types of objects you can make to kind of help visualize what your story is, right? You might want to have uh, this. The smart art is a good way of making things that would, would um, have a flow to it, like a flow chart, right? You can see kind of the flow chart that they have in the thumbnail. The other one is just for random shapes. You know, like if you want a circle, square, triangle, if you click on it, again, it's under insert. It's like a little icon right here. If you click on that, you can put arrows in there. You have all your different effects in there. You got smiley face. Everybody wants a little smiley face in there. Where did my smiley face go in there? Oh, I got to double click on it. No. How come my smiley face didn't go in? Oh, there he is. Did you double click? Uh, I somehow I double clicked and then put my smiley face in. Uh -huh. It messed up this 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 thing though, because I had that selected. Let me go back and up. Have it have an option outside selected first, then go under insert, then go under your option, and then I'm gonna go to my smiley face. And for some reason, I keep putting it in the center, but I dragged it out. There we go. Again, that was and the reason why I was showing you this. That is the theme option there underneath theme wherever that theme was the effects right here this one you see you can change the look of your smiley face see how it's changing and of course the color is what's driving it you can change the size of your shapes and so on you can rotate them Okay, so there's a lot of different pre-made graphics you can make. Oh, it's cool. Did you get your object in there? <laughs> I don't know how I got it there, though. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, it was underneath insert. Mm -hmm. and it have, yeah. So we'll have another lesson where we go over, a little bit later, where we go over how to make these uh, charts, because it's important that you learn how to make flow charts. We use flow charts for all kinds of things. You might even use them in your science class, right? You use flow charts, a scientific method. No. Don't they have like the pyramid chart for the food? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I have another lesson where I go over. I'm not going to go over it all today, but we do go over this, how to do flow charts and things like that. I kind of do that in PowerPoint because in PowerPoint it's a little bit more um, useful, I think, to show um, concept to somebody. But no, it's here in Excel as well. Okay, um, uh, what else do I want to go over? Let's see uh, what else is in my um, video here. Add text and edit data. So let's do a couple more videos today and then um, we'll move on. So let's do the next one here. This one's called Add and Edit Data. We're going to be creating a small worksheet consisting of about six months of data. And since we're not going to be using that many columns, I'm going to use the slider bar in the lower right-hand corner to zoom in. There's that icon roughly in the middle. Slide in this way. That should be good enough. Now, I want to track sales, expenses, and profits. So in cell A2, remember, you can change the location of the active cell by using your arrow keys or you can simply, by using the mouse, point, click on a different cell with the left mouse button. I'm going to type in the word sales in cell A2. To complete an entry, we press enter to move the active cell downward or tab to move it rightward. And you can also press any of the four arrow keys if you wish. I'm going to press enter. This moves the active cell into cell A3. I'm going to type the word expenses. As I'm typing it here, maybe I make a mistake and I catch it right away. I'll press the backspace key, not left arrow, but backspace. Now, maybe I've been working in Canada or Great Britain recently. I've typed it this way, and I realize, oops, that's not the way I want it. And on second thought, maybe I don't want that there at all. I want the word overhead. Often in Excel, 
rather than erasing a cell, you simply replace it with something else. So I'm going to type the word overhead. I don't have to delete what's already there. I'll type overhead and enter. Now I'm going to type profits. This time I'm going to make a mistake, but maybe I don't see it right away. I press enter. You can edit a cell or simply retype it. Now I could probably retype profits reasonably fast. But on the other hand, if you'd like to edit this cell, make it be the active cell, and there are two approaches. You can click in the formula bar with the mouse and start typing or deleting whatever is needed. For the moment, since I clicked right in front of the G, I could press delete, type an F, and press enter. You can also edit by double-clicking the cell. And you want to be double-clicking near where the error occurred. So I'm going to double-click right in front of or right after the G in progress here which should be profits, of course. There we are. I'll delete the G, press F, and enter. Now, I'm going to put numbers in here for sales and overhead. I've got caps lock on. I'm about to type 1, 2, 0, and I press O. Now, O and 0 are right next to each other on the keyboard. Maybe I'm not sensing anything wrong. I'm going to press the tab key here. Now, I'm going to type 160. I will type it correctly and press tab. And of course, right away, what are we seeing here on the screen? This is right aligned, but the 120 over here, which really is an O, is not. In Excel, if you type a number or a formula, it's automatically right aligned. Every other kind of entry is left aligned. Now, later, if I don't catch this, I'm in trouble if I ever try to write a formula. That's not a number. It's a 120. Therefore, Excel aligns it on the left. How do I fix it? One, two, zero. And I'll tab to the right and tab to the right. So I'm going to fill this in with some numbers. Each time I'm going to be pressing tab as I fill in the remainder of the cells here across for six different months. Let's say the first six months for this business here. And as I get to the end here, I'll simply press enter. And we're going to put in six more numbers right here. So basic data entry, number. Fabulous. OK, let's talk about, um, I'm going to expand upon that. Um, Again, let's start. I'm going to start with a new workbook like he did by saying file new, and I'm going to say new workbook. Again, some of the things that he demonstrated in the video, of course, were how to zoom in. If you look down here in the lower corner down here, if I can move my sheet up here a little bit, you'll see you have your zoom factor here. This is what he was talking about. It's like a little slider that's in the corner. And then there's different types of ways of looking at your page there. You can add a page like that. You can have a page that looks like this, you can have a page that looks like that. These are different ways of seeing more than one or so on. Um, again, zooming is this little slider that's in the lower corner down here. Also, sometimes you'll notice you'll see a dotted line maybe inside here. Do you see the dotted line that I have here? Usually that dotted line is referring to where the page break would be is if you're going to print it out. Okay, printing in Excel is going to be very... Um, tedious for you because a lot of times the data that you put in there does not fit on a normal eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. There's ways of adjusting it where you might have to scale the data down to fit on a page or um, cutting the page up into two pages. So there's and we'll go over how to do all those um, as we move forward. But um, printing in Excel is very difficult and and and, and it's, it's hard. Especially when you're faced with um, data that has been locked. A lot of businesses use Excel and what they do is they'll send you files or Excel files that have locked that you can't adjust the, the cell. And we'll learn how to lock our cells and unlock them with a password because you might be making Excel files where you want to lock a cell and only let people that know the password be able to unlock it. But what my whole point here, though, is those locking and unlocking come into problems when you're trying to print. Because if it's a locked cell, you can't change it and adjust it, and it, it, gives, you print, it gives me printing problems is my whole point to that all. So just be aware of that. So um, let's just put some data in real quick because I'm going to show you some things. Again, he did sales in this one. And then what else did he do? He did something else. What else? What was second? Overhead. Overhead. And then he did, uh, um, what was it? Profit. Oh, profit. And one more, what was it? That was it. Uh, oh, how about we put location? Ooh, I'm going to add to it. And then what did we put in? Numbers, random numbers? Mm -hmm. 
random numbers. Okay, let's put in a number. And we want that number to be all the way down the column or all the way down the um Yeah, columns go down. So, if you want 100 to be all the way down, a simple way of copying all the numbers down is to put your cursor in the lower right corner. As I have my cursor in the lower right corner, and you'll notice that the cursor changes to a black arrow or black uh, it's kind of a a black plus. If I hold the left mouse down and drag straight down, it will copy them all the way down, all the way down. So again, an easy way to copy a number down or across even. Let's say I wanted to put in uh, 300 in here and I wanted to put that all the way across. Again, I put my cursor in the lower right corner. I hold the mouse down and I drag and I can also copy across that way. Again, you can copy down and across by putting your cursor oh, in the I'm lower corner. <laughs> okay, so be careful where uh, you put your cursor. Your so. cursor has to change to that icon that looks like a black plus. A black plus. Okay, everybody cool with that, how to copy that down and across? Be very weary of that. That's rather difficult. Let's actually ta actually copy and paste some. So let's say we wanted to have everything in G over in J. If I click in G and I want to copy that, I can hit Control-C on the keyboard. Notice when I hit Control-C on the keyboard, I get the marching ants. We call these things marching ants. Do they look like little ants that are marching? That's the term we use to describe that kind of thing that's going around. I don't know where that came from. That came from many years ago. We got marching ants. Then I'm going to go over to J and I'm going to paste control V and it puts the data in J. Notice the marching ants do not stop in G though. Okay, which kind of is a problem in case you try and do something else in this case. So how can I tell this to stop being whatever it's being here? Okay. What's it? You can hit escape on the keyboard and it'll stop it. Escape on the keyboard will stop it from being its uh, marching ants. You want to take a break? How about we take a little break because it's already, we've been talking for an hour now. Let me uh, stop this recording here.